Hi guys, it's Max. It's the 27th of the 6th of 2010. This is a weekend review of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is moving on from last week's uh, weekend review. For those of you who saw it, uh, you'll remember that I was looking here. We were at this stage. We didn't have this uh, the sharp move. It was the 18th of June and I was saying we need one more thrust up and then look for a sharp reversal. I didn't expect the thrust up to go that high. I expected perhaps 10,510, 10,500 to be uh, the utmost target but nonetheless we overshot but it was true to form and then we had a sharp reversal and as our key technical levels broke down we started to fall away so pretty good call uh, to move on from there I actually I'm kicking or I was kicking myself because I missed uh, my own uh, expected uh, trade setup. Uh, I saw this happening and then what really got to me was this triangle. As soon as I saw that triangle here, um, I started to have uh, doubts and I started to hesitate. Uh, this triangle incidentally showed a really clear kind of traditional uh, bearish pennant pattern which worked out perfectly. If anyone traded that, that's a very valid way to trade Elliott Waves uh, in, in conjunction with traditional technical analysis. That would have been a beautiful trade, but I missed the gun on that. Uh, I had my doubts because it wasn't looking impulsive at this point. As you can see from here to here, there's no real clear impulse. Uh, from this point onwards, however, to, to this low uh, on June the 23rd, there's a clear five-wave move. And hence, in this in this weekend review, I'm going to be explaining how I'm interpreting these waves because I do not think this is an impulsive move, and why I'm actually going to be looking to buy this market on Monday. Uh, so moving on from last weekend's review, uh, if you haven't seen it, feel free to go into my YouTube channel and uh, search for it. There's only probably one one video since then that I've done, uh, so you'll be able to find it and watch that. Um, so ever since I saw this triangle, I started to hesitate about uh, the impulsiveness of the count. And uh, as you can see, further on it does get a bit messier as well, but I'll go into it. So from, from here, uh, I labeled it as an A, then I had a triangle for a B, five-way move for a C, was expecting a bounce, and we got a bounce, but it was an impulsive in nature, and we started to, to fall away again. Uh, so I can only conclude that this was an A and this was a B, uh, you know, question marks here, because at the time it was uncertain, but now I'm sort of concluding this was an A and this was a B wave. Um, something that works well, uh, to help out with the fact that this uh, that this entire move here is one structure of its own is if you take some Fibonacci levels uh, from the top you can see that the wave B retraced pretty much perfectly into the 38.2% uh, area touched it almost to the pip really and started falling away again just showing you how beautifully these Fibonacci retracement levels can work if you know exactly or correctly how to apply them I'll show you some more as this video progresses um, so we started to fall away again, and you can see here, as we start to fall away, we have a, uh, whoops, sorry, that's a bit, a bit crooked. Uh, we start to have a five-wave decline, which is this move here, uh, and this is clearly impulse. And as a result of this impulsive move down, uh, we were sort of expecting a five-wave completion for a C, and as you can see at the moment, there are quite a few overlaps happening in this general area. Uh, however, I do think that the C is possible, but um, not in the traditional sense of a, a five-wave move, but perhaps as an ending diagonal, and that could be illustrated as such. So from there's the one, and then some sort of three, false breakout for the five, and then uh, we have the move upwards. Uh, one other thing I want you to consider is why I'm not labeling this impulsive but rather corrective. Let's say uh, this was the A and this was the B and let's say uh, this hypothetically the C could have terminated here. Uh, we would expect a Fibonacci relationship between the wave A and the wave C. Uh, test question is does that relationship exist? So here is the Fibonacci retracement levels of the wave A, there's the BC, uh, the wave B touching 38.2%, very uh, good start. Let's move this down to the start of where our questionable wave C is, just there, and you can see that wave C is in fact 76.3% uh, of wave A, which lands on the 23.6% Fibonacci level. And then we get a bounce, which is working quite well at the moment, so we have a potential for a completed wave C here, so let me get that label in. At the moment, we are not 100% sure, but it has uh, good potential. Uh, so we move on to the next chart, which is uh, this wave C filled in. As you can see, here's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as it would work. Uh, this would be the ending diagonal uh, lines. The kind of, the, the, yep, the diagonal pattern would be like this. Um, second thing to consider, uh, really, is that 
there is a nice uh, bearish uh, trend line which we are bumping up against uh, which I think will be broken on Monday if I just draw that down from the peak here on June 21st to touch this wave B top here and if, if I extend it down you can see like this we have started to bump up against it and we're now showing signs of resistance here uh, my expectation is I do think this will break to the upside and I will be looking to buy the Dow Jones uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit later on just staying with with uh, the tr uh, the resistance lines and the counts at the moment. Uh, this resistance line I think is very important and I would suggest people put it on their charts just for consideration even if they do not use Elliott wave analysis. Uh, so we cl we've seen the internal uh, Fibonacci relationship between this A, B and C. Uh, now if this is a, a corrective uh, decline one must conclude that the rally from the 8th of June to the 21st of June must have been some sort of A. Uh, this decline which is, looks corrective must be some sort of B. We would expect some sort of uh, Fibonacci retracement between this grander A and this declining B. So again same sort of exercise you pull out the Fibonacci levels of the wave A as such and you can see that the bounce here started almost almost on the pip of the 38.2 percent retracement so after wave B retraces uh, into wave A uh, it gets to 38.2 percent the length of wave A to that level and it started to bounce this again is adding strength to a suggested uh, a suspected turning point uh, at that, that we may be seeing uh, at the moment and if I go into the final chart so you can see here uh, we've here's our major trend line here's the ABC with the wave B here um, so where does that leave us well the bounce out of this potential uh, ending diagonal may have been a one and we have now may have seen some sort of wave two uh, the question is uh, whether wave two has completed or not uh, but in terms of what I'm expecting out of this pattern is a uh, upside, a move to the upside. If I illustrate that with some lines for you, uh, some sort of wave 3, wave 4, wave 5, just for shorter term, and then a major correction, or a, a bigger correction, and then more upside. Uh, now, the more upside, uh, it will be a grander scale. If you see this is the A, this is a B, we are expecting a wave C, and wave C should be really in five, uh, in f a five wave move. Uh, what I am looking to do, sorry about all the zooming in and out, I keep forgetting exactly what order I'm trying to tell you things at. Uh, on Monday morning, I have actually got an order to buy this market uh, at around this level. If I just set that to green, um, make, make it like that and uh, I think dots. Uh, so I have put in an order uh, to buy the Dow Jones at 10,205. My stop loss level will be just underneath Friday's low and I'll put that to 10,075. Um, so you can know exactly, as I said, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not issuing, this is not a call service, I'm not telling you uh, what to do with your own money or trading. In fact, I, I stress that nothing that you see in this video should be taken as trading or investment advice. This is simply, uh, I'm telling you how I'm going to be approaching this market. So, I'll be buying, well I have an order to buy on Monday at, at 10,205. My stop loss will be 10,075. Uh, somebody asked me once, well, uh, do you have any particular money management rules? And yes, uh, my money management rule is that every trade that I do, my maximum risk is only 1% of my trading account. So basically you take the pip difference of, uh, of this, uh, which is about 130 pips, uh, take 1% of your trading account, divide it by 130 uh, pips, and you'll get your uh, position size, and that is how I work. So my position size is determined by the distance between my buying level and my stop loss level. Uh, so my risk over 130 pips is 1%. So for every 130 pips that this thing goes my way, my account uh, goes up by 1%, which isn't too bad if you think about it. Um, well, we'll see if it does go my way. But anyway, this is what I'm looking to do. I do want to see the market head on up way uh, quite, quite sharply. For a confirmation, I do want to see this level, this previous peak, uh, broken. Um, so if I make that a... Uh, change that to uh, red as well, I guess. hope it doesn't get too confusing. But I do want to see the level of 10,000... Uh, 200 and I'll run down a bit 260 uh, taken out to give me a bit more uh, confidence that I'm c 
getting into something that looks like a change in market direction. So if, ten th if we see the breakout of 10,205, you'll know that I have bought this market. If you see 10,260 giveaway, uh, that is a good indication that the trend is probably starting to change. Um, so now where would I expect this market to go if we have indeed seen a completed wave B and we're looking for a wave C? Uh, well bearing in mind that waves A, B and, uh, waves a and C usually have an interwave relationship, uh, here is the length of wave A and I'm going to project it over what I consider a potential bottom uh, of uh, wave B and potential start of wave C, so if I put it down there to around the 10,075 mark. Uh, the projection takes us to around 10,910, which is the A equals C. What you will also notice is 10,910 is very much a significant area because it was a previous peak before we fell away sharply. So I project that in the next few weeks this market could be looking to rally to 10,910. Uh, I will be looking to buy it on Monday and hopefully take this wave uh, C up for several hundred pips, about 700 and something pips. Uh, with any luck, a good trade to be made right there. Um, okay, I think I think that's it for this weekend review, guys. Uh, oh, the final thing to consider is that if the market uh, gets below 10,075 before it breaks 10,205, uh, the trading setup has become invalid, uh, so I will no longer I will take off my uh, my uh, buying order, uh, just for um, for you guys to consider that. Um, I think that's it. Any questions, comments, and ratings are of course very welcome. And as always, there are going to be two links in the YouTube description box. One linking to uh, my uh, Elliotitians network, which you are very invited. Uh, very welcome to come and join. You don't have to be an Elliott Wave trader to uh, to come and join us there and share your views on the markets. And the second link is for my uh, newsletter, which is 100% free and uh, is sent out about three times a week with uh, charts and commentary, mainly following the FTSE and the Dow Jones. Uh, that's it, guys. I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, all the best. Again, any questions and comments, I, uh, I will really... Uh, I have a lot of time for, for to answer those, so I'll, I'll appreciate uh, any uh, ratings of the video as well. And uh, just to Rob, uh, just to say that I'm not going to rush the goodbye, so uh, I hope this is acceptable enough for you. All the best, and until next week, happy trading.